All right, so looking at question two, um, they're asking us to state the shortest path and its distance from Moesha to travel from F, or sorry, from A to F, and we need to show a working. So this is the shortest path problem. Not a minimum spanning tree. They're not saying I have to go to every single node or anything or on every single path. I just need to get from A to F as fast as possible. Okay, so one way that I'm going to use this, or do this, is by using Dijkstra's algorithm. Um, now you can use trial and error and write up a little tree and keep track of all your working if you want. But I'm just going to go through this one because it's a good example of using this. Um, so basically what happens is I'm just going to start from A because I know I need to start there. And I need to finish at F. So I'm going to look for possible ways to get from A to F. And let's give a go maybe just along the bottom. So from A to B is a distance of 42. So here I would write, I've come from A, I've traveled 42 kilometers. And I might go to E next. So I'm going to say I've come from B, and I've gone a total of 42 plus 82. So that's going to be 122 kilometers that I've traveled. So often writing them together. So this little notation here means coming from B, I've found a route that's actually 122 kilometers. Sorry, 124. So then on to F, I'm going to go from E. So I'm coming from E, and I'm using a path that's taken me 124 so far. And then I'll add the 33 on top of that. So that's going to be 157 kilometers. <coughs> so that's my first try. I've made it from A to F at a distance of 157 kilometers. But there's lots of options. Let's see what else I could try here. What if I pick a different color? You don't have to, but I'm just going to for help here. If I go from A to D, here I would say I'm coming from A, I've traveled 55 kilometers. Let's go down here to C. So I'm coming from D in this case, the last note I was at was D, I've traveled 55 plus 46. So that's a total of 101 kilometers. Next I'm going to go from C down to E. So from D, sorry, from C down to E, that's 101 plus 28 kilometers. Let's see at 128 kilometers. So I don't actually need to go any further here because I noticed that this route so far has used 128 kilometers and the blue one I tried earlier, I see here I've come in from the direction of B, I've actually used 124. And now that they both use the same path of 33, I know that my B one is actually shorter already. So I can stop there on the 128 and not go any further because I know B was actually shorter to that point. Let's see if we can find another option. Let's try the top again. So going from A to D is still going to be A of 55. You don't actually have to write it again if you don't want. But just to help track where we've gone, I might show you. A to 55. And then let's just go along the top there. So from D, I'm going to travel 55 plus 113. So that's 168, and that's way further than the 157 that I've traveled already. So again, I'm not crossing it out so much I can't read it, but I'm just saying I don't need that one. I have another shorter route already. Let's see what else we could try. A few other options here. Now, with Dijkstra's, you don't actually have to use all of it, but you can um, kind of use some common sense here. So I'm going to look at this one. How about going from A? Another option I could do is go from D, go down to B, and then back up to C. But if I look here, I mean, that's 55 plus 74 plus 53. That's already way bigger than using this path here on 46 or just going 42, 82. So I'm not even going to bother with that one because I can see that it's much bigger. But if you weren't sure, you could add it up and see how it goes. So I'm going to try across the bottom again. How about A to B? Again, I could say A distance of 42. Instead of going over to E, which might look like the shortest path because it's just one, I'm actually going to jog up here to C first. So going from B up to C, I've gone 42 plus 53, so that's 95 kilometers. And now I can see that 
this is already a shorter path than D, but I know I abandoned that earlier, so I might just cross that out anyways. And from B down to E, sorry, from C down to E, so coming from C this time with a different direction than the first time I tried, I'm going to have 95 plus 27, so that's 221 or 122, sorry, reading it backwards as I write out the answer. And looking here, I see now that that path I tried at C is actually shorter than the path I tried originally at B, because so far I've only traveled 122 versus 124. So I know C is actually, this path here is actually the shorter one of the two that I've tried down the bottom. And finishing that off, coming from E, using the alternate map route, I'm going to go 122 plus 53, 155 kilometers. And I see there that that's actually the shortest one. So don't forget to actually write out what the route is. That's A, B, C, E, F. At a total distance of 155, and don't forget your units, in this case, kilometers. And just to remind you, as another way to show you working if you wanted to, you could draw up one of those tables if you want where you put in the tree diagram. You've got the option of going from A to B, and then from B either to C or E, etc. And you can keep building that if you like. It's a perfectly valid way to do it.